We're going to talk about these private AS numbers for a few minutes before we head to the BGP RID labs. And I'm sure you've noticed the rather large range of numbers available to us for an autonomous system, 1 through 65535. Some of these are considered private AS numbers. And while you can use them and the router won't scream at you, hey, don't do that, uh, you don't want to advertise any AS in the range 64496 through 65535 to external networks, uh, just as you shouldn't advertise private IP addresses. They are the equivalent in BGP. No matter how hard you try, you can't assign AS0. And I even tried, even though I knew better, but router BGP0, as you see on the board, was rejected. Uh, some Cisco documentation refers to autonomous system number as ASN. And some Cisco documentation and books do not. So you really should be prepared to see the term ASN on your exam as well as just plain old AS number. So if you see BGP ASN, don't be thrown when you haven't seen that acronym before because, by golly, now you've seen that acronym. Let's talk about the BGP RID. We've seen this in a couple of different places throughout the course, throughout the videos. And you can spot the local router's BGP RID in Show IP BGP. And you can see it right there, local router ID is 172.12.123.3, excuse me, .1 in this case, which brings up the question, well, what happens if I don't have any BGP routes and I run show IP BGP, like say this, <laughs> here on router 5, I have erased the configs from the last BGP video, and right now routers 1, 2, 3, and 5 are all in AS1235, but I don't have any routes being advertised between them, so when I ran show IP BGP, I got nothing. You can also run show IP BGP summary to see the local AS number and the BGP router identifier, which in this case is 55555. You've got a pretty good idea how we got that, and here's the exact way we got that. The BGP RID follows much the same rules as the EIGRP and OSPF RIDs. The highest IP address assigned to a loopback is going to be used as the BGP RID. If there is no loopback, and in BGP world that's going to be pretty rare, the highest IP address assigned to an up and up physical interface is going to be used. Now you can hard code the BGP RID with the BGP router ID command, and to run that you must be in BGP configuration mode. I kid you not. There are quite a few commands like that actually. Let's hop over to router 1. Thanks somebody for slamming that door later. I guess the quiet sign just isn't quite big enough. <laughs> Let's run show IP BGP. We got nothing. And show IP BGP sum. We see a couple of adjacencies I built about an hour and 10 minutes ago. And we've got the BGP router identifier 172.12.123.1 because right now on router 1 I didn't have any loopbacks. So let's say we see this and we want to hard code it to all 11s, 11 for each octet. And here's BGP, and as you see, there are quite a few commands here, none that we really looked at in this course, because we're saving just a little BGP for later. I think this is the only command we're using where you have to use BGP in front of it in BGP configuration mode. And we're just going to go with router ID here, emphasis on the R, and then you just put in your manually configured router identifier. And that's it, except for this part. <laughs> they are, you are going to lose your adjacencies. This is not a soft reset. They actually go down hard. And you can even see the reason why router ID changed. Now, the good thing is, as you can see, that they came up very quickly. 10 seconds is about right. .5 took 10 seconds. 123.2 took 11 seconds. Uh, excuse me, a little longer, 13 seconds, and then dot three took about 11. So what's a second or two between friends? Not something I would do at noon on, you know, a, a work day for, with BGP, but it's a good thing to know you're going to lose those adjacencies for just a few seconds. One thing, though, you know, we always got to fool around a little bit and say, what happens if? What about router IDs being the same on a couple of neighbors? What would happen if that happened? Well, let's go over to router 5. Whoops, caught me. BGP, it's really hard to type BGP in front of that. BGP router ID. 
And you see the neighbor down, router ID changed, router ID changed, and the physical topology is still the same as from the last lab. And now we're going to start getting notifications that BGP identifier are wrong, and it's just going to keep on going BGP notification received, and it's just not good. So we will go back in while we're getting these commands. And let's say we set it to 5555. And let's see what happens there. And the neighbor is already up. We'll go ahead and make absolutely sure. You can see BGP router identifier all fives and the adjacency's been up for six seconds. So a good thing to know there about the BGP RID. You can't have it be the same between neighbors or you're going to lose those adjacencies and then they're not going to come back. Just a quick word here about route redistribution between an IGP and BGP. Route redistribution is not always bi-directional. If A is sending, this, however it is, if you've got OSPF, EIGRP, it doesn't matter as you saw in route redistribution section, generally you're going to have two-way route redistribution, but not every time. You know, you can redistribute EIGRP routes into OSPF without taking OSPF routes and putting them into EIGRP, which is fantastic except that it has nothing to do with BGP. Well, on rare occasion, you may need to redistribute IGP routes into BGP. And there are three ways to make that happen. We could use the network command to introduce it. We could use static route redistribution, or we could do redistribution routes, uh, redistribution, uh, redistribution of routes discovered by an IGP. The reason I'm bringing this up, Cisco strongly recommends that you avoid that last choice whenever possible because that form of redistribution can easily lead to routing loops and I'm talking routing loops from HE double broken toothpicks. The network command is almost always your best bet for that kind of redistribution. Now what about taking BGP routes and redistributing them into IGP? There's rarely a good reason to do so. At high levels of BGP admin you may have to do it but a full BGP routing table I mentioned earlier could have thousands of routes. It could have 100,000 plus routes. And if you just did, say, a simple redistribute, let's take all our BGP routes and put them into OSPF, you would have a real problem there. You'd have a real mess. Uh, and there have, over the years, been problems with that happening. You never redistribute routes from BGP to an IGP unless you're really, really sure of what you're doing, and maybe not even then. So that, that quick word about route redistribution wraps up our look here at BGP. Spend all the time you need to with the videos. I know that's true of every section, but for many of you, BGP is a brave new world and it's just new terminology, but you can master it and you will just get in plenty of time with the videos and practice on your own stuff if you have that chance. With all that said, take a deep breath, have a little drink, you deserve it, whatever kind of drink you drink, and I'll see you on the next section.